I would like to explore this evening the idea of dreams. I want to push the implications of it and let's see whether it's possible to do. So we have a volunteer. Go. leopard overcomes this deer in a way that it has control of it, it's got it on the ground, and it's um, really seized it and it's going to devour it, begin to devour this deer. And all of a sudden, gets up, kind of steps back, lets the deer get up and go. So once that has taken place, I am now in the dream and I am speaking with someone with whom my impression is it is kind of a magus or a, a magician or a shaman. say what it was. He makes me aware that he had a particular scent, scent that he released, and that's what made the leopard let the deer go. Mm-hmm. Made the deer go, made the leopard go. The deer go in terms uh, of the dream. In terms of the dream, he released the scent and it made the leopard let the deer go. Okay, okay. It let go. It made the leopard, right. It changed its nature. Release the so deer, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of a bit flabbergasted because I, I've seen the whole scene and wondered what could possibly have made the leopard let this deer go, and now I realize the secret behind what happened, the, uh, the, change, in, the change in its nature took place because of some potion of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, so then the dream <coughs> shifts one last time, and I am in a bathtub mm -hmm. in a home with my sister in the tub also. And we're just very comfortable, and I, these, the, uh, well, I'll just complete the dream and I'll explain why this is so unusual. And we're just having a very comfortable bathing experience together. We're adults, and my mother is also in the bathroom, and she's talking, and we're all laughing. She's what doing? She's my mother is talking to us both, and we're all sort of laughing and having a very okay. comfortable conversation. Where is she, in respect to the top? outside of the bathtub, okay. talking towards us, but she's in the bathroom, as it were. Um, and it all feels incredibly safe, including the fact that we're naked and my mom's there and it's my sister and all of these things. These things 
were never true in my family. I've never seen my family naked. I've never seen my father naked. But in this particular dream, everything was comfortable. It wasn't unusual. It wasn't steeped in strange sexual sexual connotations. It was just okay. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up. Good. Anything more? Good. Now, as you reflect on it and go over it, if there's anything you can recall that amplifies any part of it, just go right ahead and do it. Right? So just talk through it again. Opening scene, a wilderness scene. Go ahead. All right, there's a... The first thing that comes into my view is this, this leopard mm-hmm. chasing and overtaking this mm-hmm. wild stag, this mm-hmm. deer, this antelope. And taking it to the ground where it is going to begin to tear into it and tear it apart. Mm-hmm. Certainly it's a, it's a sense of there's, 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 it's a sense that something violent is going to take place here, this animal is going to die. Um, and that it's something that's part of nature, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, to my surprise, the whole scene shifts. This, an- this animal just very alertly just backs off of this, mm-hmm. this deer and, mm-hmm. and just lets it get up Done. and walk away. Yeah, good. Right. Uh, so the scene then shifts to where I'm in the presence of someone who seems to have a kind of magical connotation. Magic, a shaman. Deeper understanding about Deeper life, understanding. Uh-huh. And he just immediately reveals to me that the reason why that holds... Uh, anything you can say about that person? No. In appearance or anything else no. in the dream? Any manner, style, anything like that? No. Okay, go ahead. Um, they, he immediately reveals to me that the reason that the whole instinctive nature of that act, of that situation shifted was because he has this scent that when he released it, it had that effect on the leopard to let go of the sound, to make it just back off and let go. Okay. Uh, then the scene shifts immediately to the situation where I'm in a bathtub with one of my sisters and we're bathing and it's very comfortable, relaxed, we're laughing and it just feels fine. My mother's in the room too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Things that were absolutely, Mm -hmm. completely off limits growing up in my Mm -hmm. home. It just never Mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it was really, it would have been incredibly frowned upon and thought to be a very bad Mm -hmm. thing. Certainly wouldn't have been comfortable or relaxed. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the particular state of mind that you're in is when you find out that the magi or shaman has that scent, or whatever it is, right? Which, when released, made the leopard back off from the deer. Yeah. Right. Okay. What was that like? You said before that you were... It was like a transcendence, and it was like, gee, life is so much bigger than I realize. Or what, 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 what? Life is so much bigger than I realize. There's more than meets the eye. There's something else. Uh, I don't understand everything. In a sense of really sort of loving that discovery. And the effect it had on you was that you... That I was in wonderment. Wonderment, right? That's what you said before, wonderment. to discover that there was something beneath, beneath it all. Yeah. Huh? 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 Yeah. Huh.
Good. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, just talk for a few minutes about make a contrast between the leopard and the deer and the last scene in the dream and the tub? What do you notice about it? You were raised to think that this was dangerous. I was 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 told that I was unsafe in that situation all my life. And subsequently maybe unsafe for women. I am unsafe for this kind of situation. Right? Told this all your life. Right? Right, sure, sure. Implied is better. Right. Mm-hmm. That I'm not safe for women. Or right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the last thing I think I, I really need to just say is, for the first time in years, because I hadn't been dating and I hadn't been thinking about it, and was really doing a lot of inner searching. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the first time in the last five months or so, I mm. started to think about myself as mm. meeting someone nice and actually dating again. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been dating years, one date. So part of it is that I also think that a lot of that's really been on my mind. I mean, I talked to friends about it. I talked to Allison, who's in the room here with us right now, even about it. I'm just trying to get advice. And some of it is about, am I a safe person? I think I question that. Mm. Mm. I question everything right now about this, mm. but it means so much to me because I feel I'm a good person for someone to know and love. I just don't know how to do it anymore. And I kind of miss that connectedness, whatever that could be. Mm-hmm. Being mm-hmm. held by someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's, that's in my psyche a lot right yeah. now. I'm someone who would probably just love to be held all night long by someone and think that was the most cherished thing ever. You know? Mm-hmm. Just to have my hand held. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'd step that far out of that such, that kind of world now for no. so long. No. No. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that I feel sad talking about it. Yeah, say, that's a very interesting state of mind that we're calling B. It's my favorite state of mind. Um, That wonderment, right? Something deeper to it all. Something going on that more than meets the eye, right? Yeah. Agree? It's an interesting state, isn't it? Yes. Right. Yeah. Kind of a wonderment, right. because you have this question, what could have done that? Right. Yeah. Because the leopard has been transformed into what? Into the lamb. Into yeah. Yeah. yeah, that kind of image, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So that when he explained it, is it a he or she? Shaman. My impression was a he. That's okay, okay. When he explained it, right, I have a scent, right? When released, it made the leopard release the deer or back off the deer. And you're in a state of wonderment, right? It's an interesting state of mind. Talk more about that state of mind. <clears throat> it's it's my favorite. 
it's my favorite connected sense of being for me. It's the thing I've loved the most in these three years of returning to school and meeting teachers and all that is that sense of realizing that my kind of perhaps closed closed world, those the doors that I've created for myself can be open and there's a new way to see things. It's quite a good feeling. It's like my little prison is a can be, I can be released mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. That, there is, that perhaps there really is a kind of magic. Kind of a magic, yeah. Kind of, oh. To, and, and something very creative about life that I, I am getting closer to and love so much. Right. Mm -hmm. Of that deeper understanding. Yeah, I experience it here in this class with you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You experience what? I experience it in this class with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's something I cherish. Yeah. Uh -huh. cherish. Um. It's about wisdom and creativity. And it also resumes creativity, right? It's, it's connected to the resumption of creativity? Yeah. What did the Magi do to the leopard then? He kind of transformed it into yeah, a, he, yeah. he, uh, what I, I think the phrase that works is he transformed its nature. Yeah, transformed its nature. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lost his spots. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very nice. Um, when did you have this dream? How, how many days ago? About ten days ago. Ten. When? Ten days ago. Okay. Did you say that that uh, there's a possibility of entering into some kind of relationship for yourself on the horizon? Well, no, just that I'm I'm comfortable thinking about it and thinking okay. about it a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. okay. I realize, so I really thinking about it. Yeah. Right. Thinking about it. More comfortable thinking about it. Right. with that is just a kind of shyness and a sort of self-judging part of myself. So yeah, what's happened to that self-judging part of yourself then? Um, well, because it's self-judging in a certain way. Yeah, it's saying that I'm not good enough to know somebody no, no, wonderful. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. So that's settled. Mm, well, settled. Or settling. Yeah, I, yeah. I still have a lot. Of, I still have certain doubts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I don't see myself the way I used to. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> that helps. 
Mm -hmm. It's like I discovered a part of me in the last week or so that doesn't understand why I haven't liked myself. I actually found that part that's going, but why haven't I for so long? But I haven't for so long. Yeah. A lifetime. Yeah, yeah. But the, finally I've been able to kind of objectively see that part and go, but why? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any <clears throat> particular way you can test this out in your own life? Rather than just think about it, is it yeah. possible? Huh? Yeah, I suppose I could ask somebody out. Pardon? I could ask someone out. Oh no. Do you have anyone in mind? Um, there is someone. Yeah. Okay. All right. How long have you been aware of that possibility? Uh, some months. Some months. Yeah. I wouldn't really know that it's a possibility of someone from a completely different right. kind of world than me. Okay. But then about ten days ago, this drops in. Yeah, and I've had similar things that are along this line, quite frankly, even last night. I mean, it's that last? That are kind of along this sort of line where there's a sort of... When? Did you say? As recent as the last 24 hours. Last 24 hours. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And if it's uh, of such a nature, is it agreeing with certain parts of this? It's agree. It seems like several dreams keep coming up with something about with this end scenario where mm -hmm. I'm safe with women. Mm -hmm. That I am someone who can be trusted or cared or, or liked or trusted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because certainly that's important right here, isn't it? Because is that what it means in the tub? You're trusted, right? Trusted and uh, liked? In terms of what that represented yeah. in my family? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. We'll give it the... Hmm. So what would you say this dream is capable of doing for you then? What is it saying? What is it doing? Um, that I think it might, well, what I would get from it is that I am not perceived by girls, women, as mm -hmm. some dangerous mm. person. They might actually look at me and perceive me to be a, a, mm. a to be someone that seems like a decent yeah. type yeah. of yeah. person. Lost your spots. Well, you know, the last uh, little piece for this also is that the last relationship that I was in was in Spain with a girl in the Basque region of northern Spain. And um, she had actually um, I kind of started to find all of this out in the relationship that she had been sort of abused sexually by her father and things like that. And there really came a point when she went into a complete depression. And in Spain, they sent her to a psychiatrist who put her on these really strong drugs. And I just kept saying, let's get the family together and talk about all this. I don't believe it's just mm -hmm. some, they were saying it was a chemical imbalance that just hit like that. Mm -hmm. But I was real sure that buttons were getting pushed just in our relationship about trust issues and things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So I wound up, and it never did resolve. By the time she started to feel a little better after months of my caretaking her, I finally broke apart and I came back to the States pretty broken. And I basically let go of my career and really just wanted this thing to work. Came away feeling that I had done something terribly wrong um, in just, I think, being someone who had been very open with her. Mm -hmm. Not jealous, which is a little bit part of that culture too. You know? and, um, so in any case, I also felt like I kind of killed somebody for the last four years or something like that, and really afraid of that, I think, too, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, there's a part of me that just thinks if, mm -hmm. sees, if I, someone sees me, they just kind of start to judge that I'm someone really dangerous, actually. Yeah. Yes. 
bad. And then, of course, I have my ch sort of childhood integration that I'm not yeah. lovable anyway. So, so therefore, the uh, <clears throat> this last scene is quite important. Huge, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which plays on the first scene, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. Transformation of the leper changes his very nature. Mm. And would you say that the B section is really kind of acknowledging my years of studying and, and listening and learning? It that certainly looks like that's the... Transformation. Transforming. Transformative yeah. agent. Or yeah. Something. yeah. It looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. The deeper understanding. Yeah. I can't hear you. The deeper understanding, he was saying. Was tra the deeper understanding, he said, was transformative of his nature. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's like the last thing I want to do is scare some nice girl but I might want to get to know a nice girl. <laughs> and then in this quandary, I don't even know how to do it. It's just hilarious well, to me. But the nice thing about it is there's nothing you have to do. <laughs> you do there's thing. nothing you have to rehearse. Yeah, I guess. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For plays, you have to rehearse. Yeah. Right. For playing, you have to rehearse. Yeah. You have to psych yourself up, and remember lines and all kinds of things. Yeah. But this looks like all you need is the scent. <laughs> That's good sense. I mean, good sense. I mean, <laughs> good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Huh. Yes? Yes. Yes. Do you just want me to read this? Yeah, is that all right? That's fine. Fine. It's all right with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. I am given a book that you that you have recently written. Oh, hold it. I want to draw that because I'm so good at drawing. Okay. okay, in this book, I, I've been given this book that you've recently written so that I can take it apart, unravel it, dissect it, unzip it like a program. Um, that's probably the word that applies the best, but all of those words apply. And on the cover of the book is a large empty circle. Um, that had that you had drawn on the chalkboard that night in class. This dream occurred two weeks ago, right at uh, Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. So the large empty circle is all that's on the cover, except for the title of the book, which I don't remember and your name, and they're in small letters up in the top right-hand corner. So I am completely overwhelmed by the task I'm supposed to assume, and I choose to put it aside for the time being, because I can't handle this project right now, and it's too much for me. Then I am taken up near the top of an enormous metal circular ring, again a big empty circle, and it is understood that I am to be able to function in some significant way at this height, and, and again I'm supposed to be undertaking some important task, but I can't even open my eyes because I'm petrified by how far up we are. And, and I've got here, we are way up looking down on the earth 
as it appears as if you were flying in an airplane. I realize I've got so much work to do before I could ever be able to even function at this height, and it's wrong for me to be there. I sense disappointment from those who have brought me up there, and I am ashamed. And then we get back down, and I find that somebody else has already started working and making headway on dissecting your book, so the job is no longer mine to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, do one more, please. All right. Um, reading it through, or yeah, yeah. Okay. And as you do it, if there's anything more you want to add, please do so. All right. Um, I'm given this book that you have recently written, and I'm to take it apart, um, unravel it, dissect it, unzip it. All these words apply, and it's. It's not a large book. That's that was something. It was apparently simple. I mean, it, even the circle, even you know the, the the cover. It just it looks deceptively simple, but it's an undaunting task that I'm being asked to do by taking this book apart, opening it, starting to read it. Um, it will unfold. On the cover of the book is the same large empty circle as discussed in class that night. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's all that's on the cover except for the title and your name in small letters up in the top corner. And the black, the book is also black and white. The cover. Um, I'm completely overwhelmed by the task I'm supposed to assume, and I choose to put it aside for the time being. I can't handle this project right now. It is too much for me. Mm-hmm. Then I'm taken up near the top of an enormous metal circular ring, big empty circle, and it's understood that I'm supposed to be able to function at this height, again, to undertake some important task. But I can't even open my eyes. I, it's, it's, a, it's a sense of vertigo, um, looking down, and I just keep holding on to the side of this circle. The circle is also, did I mention it's metallic? It's it's just this big metallic, huge mm-hmm, mm-hmm. thing. Um, and we look, when we're looking down on the earth, it appears as if we're flying an airplane. That's how high we are. Mm-hmm. And I realize I've got so much work to do before I could ever be able to even function at this height, and it's wrong for me to be there. I sense disappointment from those who brought me up there, and I am ashamed. So they take me back down, and when I, we get down, I find somebody else has already started working on your book and making headway dissecting it. So the job is no longer mine to do. Mm -hmm. Good. And now, (laughs) first level of reflection. Go ahead. to the being completely overwhelmed by dissecting your book. Mm-hmm. book. A um, couple of things. I've written here some notes that I took that I've always been, I've always put off overwhelming tasks and projects until the last minute. Okay, always. Huh. Yeah, so put so off. It's an MO. Such <laughs> tasks, right? Such as taxes, studying right. for a large exam. To the last woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. However, I do maintain the confidence that I will get the job done well, even within the limited time that I allow myself. There have been a few exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Another another thing about that is that um, I 
I give myself a lot of things to do, and I have a lot of projects going on, even right now in my life. And um, I think I set myself up to feel that I'm not paying enough, I'm not paying the attention that I want to um, in regards to my reading, in regards to um, this kind of work. But I know that it's there, and I know <coughs> that if I were to focus my attention on it, that I could. Okay, first level of reflection now. Go ahead. What? What do you notice? Looking at the dream. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. Is there a judgment here made in the dream about the task? It's not large. <clears throat> it's apparently simple. But it's a daunting task. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a nice contrast? Mm -hmm. In what way? Well, I, I think that the task is daunting. It's, it, it would be an all-consuming task. You're all consuming. Other things mm -hmm. would have to go by the wayside. I I think there's some reluctance to allow myself to go there. That's that's another thing about these large projects and tasks tasks that I put off. One of the reasons is, is that once I once I go there, it, it becomes everything. It's, it's, it's not enough to get something done. I want to understand it. I want to, it, it has to be everything. Um, I don't want to come out of it until it's completely unzipped, taken apart, every part analyzed. You know, it's a certain level that you anticipate mm -hmm. and standard that you have. Mm -hmm. Right. By the way, have you gotten into the book in the dream? No. Right. No, I have the book. But you have the book. I have the book, yes. And you're making a judgment about it. In the dream. Yeah. It's simple, mm -hmm. but not large, it's apparently simple. Now is this your judgment about what you expect will take place as a result of viewing the book or before you open it up? What, the fact that it's a daunting task? Yeah. Oh, I know it is. Yeah, I guess that's a judgment call on my part, but there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. But is that judgment a result of finding the book itself? Oh, um, requiring those qualities. Uh, it's more of, of of a glimpse into a it. Glimpse into it. Yeah. Okay. But okay, now watch the next level. Okay. Overwhelmed at this task. Mm -hmm. It's too much for me. How? Now compare that with the steel ring. Hmm. Compare that to the steel ring. Yeah. Well, um, I'm supposed to function. The is, is the expectation that is on me, or on my perceived idea of what is expected of me. The over I'm not overwhelmed by the task. I know 
I know in the dream that I can do it. Right. But on my own time, I can't get to it right now, and I feel that there are people who need me to do this right now, and, I, and I'm, I'm letting them down by not getting to Disappoint it. others. Yes, disappointing yes. others. Yes. And yes. That would be the same with the big metallic ring. Mm. They've taken me up there to do this thing, and I'm just not ready for the heights yet. You know, I mean, it, it, and, and I feel like I should be. I feel that the time has come for me to be at, to, for both of these things. Yeah. But curiously enough, I just, put um, those two together now, all right? You got the two. Mm -hmm. All right. On the one hand, come on. I'm. I'm I've got it in my hand. I've got it in my hand. It's there. I've got it in my hand, mm -hmm. right? Right. But on the other hand, I've got, I've got all these other things on my I just, you know, I'm, I don't know why I don't feel like I'm ready. I don't. Because on the other hand, you feel? I'm prepared. That you're prepared. Yes. Yeah. I'm prepared. Right. I'm prepared. Oh, no. I'm prepared. Not ready. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Am I right? Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's too much work. Right? Yeah, but when you say that, it sounds like it's like I can't. It work is such a it has such a negative connotation. It's not that I don't want to do the work. It's not that I would find it to be a laborious chore. It's just so much of it there. It's chewy, it's meaty. Yeah, there's so much there in the idea of work. Right. Right. Totally agree with you. Right? Mm -hmm. How could you be expected to function on the level? It's such a job. Work. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Right. Talk about that word, will you? Work. It's an interesting word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Go ahead. What? Um, work. I have I, I like to work. I, I, like I said, I don't have a problem with getting no getting, getting it done. Getting it done. No, right? I agree. Or, I agree. By the way, as you think of the idea of work, though. Uh, Thank you. Put that in words. <laughs> Come on, put that in words. You just stuck your tongue out. Come on. Oh, just got to get prepared to do the work. Right. Look here. Have to get get prepared to do the work. Come on, more. Um, Got to get fit. Right. fit. Got to get, get, get in shape. Got in shape. Got to right. get all my stuff together before Right, I get all my stuff together. Mm -hmm. All right, more. Come on. Um, Got to get a good night's sleep and a good meal. <laughs> it's going to require a lot of brain power. All right, it's going to so, require a lot. So I got to be alert. Require a lot. Mm -hmm. all right. Alert. Right. Mm -hmm. right, right. That's the idea of work, right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting notion, isn't it? Work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Where does that go? Where does that come from? What's the history of that? What, my idea about work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's the history of that? Mm -hmm. How did all those ideas cluster together around that idea? It must have taken quite a bit of time to bring them all together into that unity. Yeah. Huh. Uh, pick it up at home? Yeah. Oh, how? <laughs> uh, how? That's curious. I wouldn't have guessed. Go ahead. There I was. How old? Come on. <laughs> oh, God. Um, well, let's see. Um, when my uh, 14, I, my parents were divorced, and Go ahead. it's just uh, keep maintaining the house. It's just my mother 
was always in the state of getting work done. It, it was um, it was a grind. There was um, it was important to be perceived as always being busy, or not being busy for the sake of being busy, but to prove that you're working, that you're, you're doing what needs to be done. Prove you're working. Yeah. Right. And there wasn't a lot of joy in it. But there wasn't? A lot of joy in it. Why not? Because she was recently divorced. Um, had to uh, go out and um, work 40 hour a week job at a job that she didn't like and then come home and she had two kids to take care of and to feed and to make sure that we got to school and um, we were not, um, we, we didn't pull our fair share. Oh, that's a good slogan. Who said that? <laughs> Come on. You are not pulling your fair share right. of, of the work. Of the work. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, now we need to contrast this with what went on. What went on then? Yes, now look here, at 14. So mm -hmm. Notice the language. Mm -hmm. Getting the work done mm -hmm. is a grind. Getting the work done. Mm -hmm. You have to prove that you're working. How do you prove that you're working? For your mother, <laughs> my mother, it was it was the way to let her know that she, I loved her. It's right. Great. 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 Right. God. So if you uh, ended up right, mm -hmm. <laughs> wasted. As long as you were working, you would go straight to heaven. Okay. Now, in terms of the house, did you have chores? Oh, yes. Did you do them? Somewhat, yeah. No, no, no. No, I, I, was, I was horrifically lazy as a child, and I, I never did them without her nagging and, and, and nagging and nagging me, and I would do them at the last minute. I would always put them we'll off. Put them off to the last minute? Mm -hmm. right. Did that give her enough time to uh, go through her speech? Hmm? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Um, did you know when the la when the speech was over? So then you'd go to work and do the job. I knew how far to push it. You know how far to push it, yeah. right? Uh, she knew how far you could push it. <laughs> she did. Oh. So by the way, when she was nagging and doing this trip, how did she appear? No, no, no. Look, like, was she yawning at the time? Was she sleepy? Oh, no, no. She uh, was, was she what? She was very alive. And oh, very alive. Mm -hmm. More. Very um, alive. Agitated, upset. Pardon, pardon me. Active? Active, yes. Active? Mm -hmm. Alert? Yes. Alert? Alert. Intense? Yes, very intense. Ah, ah. In my face. In your, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting state of mind, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you could get her in that state of mind. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's your role. Yes. Right, because otherwise, how was she? If she came home from work and everything was done. She wouldn't have any purpose. <laughs> no purpose. Come on. No purpose. No, she wouldn't be. No purpose. What kind of shape would she be in? She'd just probably just go into the bedroom and go to bed. I mean, she just she wouldn't be happy. My mother, my mother enjoys being in this. State. Ah, she enjoys the this, mouth, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So therefore. What did you create for her? I gave her life meaning. You gave her life meaning, <laughs> right? It became active, intense, and tell, right, alert, mm -hmm. right? And then she could focus on you, right? Is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. Then you existed for that moment? <laughs> That's good. Good. Hmm. Hmm. And she could play that you're not pulling your fair yes, share. Not pulling my fair share. Yeah, you could have answered that, couldn't you? Um, I, I. You could say, "I have to wait until we finish this number." Right? <laughs> 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 <Bye. Okay. laughs> It is nearly time, Mom. I got a few more minutes and then we can go to work, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Then that disappointment game, shall we call it that? Hmm. Yeah. Right. It has to look convincing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, the way you like to do projects, because you are confident that you can do it, is when I can do it in my own time. When I have time available. Mm -hmm. right. But, by the way, is it possible that as you approach this deadline, you start barraging yourself with a number of thoughts that may echo these early scenes to get you to work? Would that my be own, curious? My own internal mother. Yeah, yeah, you internalize all that? Then you have to wait until you finish your own series of speeches before you go. <laughs> oh <my laughs> right? Would that be interesting? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Can I just tell you one, one quick little thing also as a as yeah, side note? There was um, a couple of nights after that, I think I may have mentioned to you, there was another dream. It just, it reminded me of the, uh, yes, the yes, incident right on the yeah, ring. Yeah, please go on. Um, I'm walking along uh, the water's edge. Hold it. Okay. We need some art is what we need. Without art, we can't function. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm walking along the water's edge. I'm good at drawing water. What is that? Uh, like the ocean. Like, yeah, uh, that's right. It's a right. walkway along the, the water. Again, there's uh, a nebulous group of people with me. And we come up on a little girl mm -hmm. who is being asked to do something of significance on her part. Mm -hmm. um, to go in, but it, it involves going into the water. And she's afraid and they have to keep lowering the standard for her. You know, she was supposed to like jump into the water at this height and she's afraid to do it. So they keep lowering it and she still won't go into the water. And I'm empathizing with her. Mm -hmm. In fact, I even remember back onto mm -hmm. the stream. Mm -hmm. And while this moment's going on, this killer well comes out of the water and it, you know, it, it, it comes out and, and uh, opens its mouth and it goes back in. And I think, well, she had good reason to be afraid. Mm -hmm. These waters aren't necessarily safe. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it reminded me of the, that, that dream with the, the ring. 
Um, how deep was the water in the end? How deep was the water? Yeah. I don't know. In the sense that the child didn't want to get into that oh. one point and another point, they kept lowering their standards. The height that she was going to jump into the water. Oh, not the depth of the water. No, 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 no. She was, she was being asked to jump into this water and she was afraid to and they had asked her originally to jump at a particular height. It had no sense of how deep the water was. No. But okay. I, I Rather the height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she was afraid of the water and, and I, I, I'm not sure why there was a height issue to it, but she was, a, uh, she was afraid of jumping into the water from a height, uh, the, the highest height. And by the time the whale had jumped out of the water, it, she was, they had the thing down on the ground. I mean, she wasn't even going to be. There was no, no height at all. <laughs> there was none at right. all. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And then she was willing to go in. Well. Would it not for the. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. And you empathized with her. Yes. I, I was thinking, oh, I know how it feels to be in that position and, and to be afraid like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And keep going, go on with the dream. And, and, and to feel she's, she, this, this was an important act for her. And again, there were people there expecting this and, and trying to help her achieve this goal and uh, she was not able to do it. And I think there was also a feeling of, of some public humility. You know, that all these people are watching her mm -hmm. fail. Disappointment and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, I, and, and so my heart really went out to her, thinking, you know, I, I have felt that too, being up on the big metal ring and, and having people, you know, take, take the time and care and um, wanting this to happen and, and, and to take me up there and then not being able to perform. Not being able to perform or not performing? Well, certainly the feeling that it was, that I was incapacitated because I was so terrified by the heights. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, it was a vertigo. Yeah. Well, could you just say a few more words about the killer whale? Just keep talking okay, about so it in the dream. So the so she's she's Bible. down on the ground. She's about she's got her foot in the water almost, and this killer whale just comes out of nowhere and and comes up and right where she's at. Like he could have bitten her as she jumped in the water, and. Um, and then he goes away. Uh, uh, interesting the way you said that. Describe the whale at that moment as he went away. He, it's, it's kind of like Lazarus Leopard. It's, he, he comes up and it's very obvious that he could have hurt her, but he just, he just uh, recedes back into the water. No, no, I don't know. Give me a picture of that receding back into the water, please. <laughs> Well, his head comes up, Thank and, you. and he's he's all teeth, and he's got his mouth open, and he goes, right. but then he closes his mouth, and he sinks back down into the water. As if what? As With if what kind of attitude, style, manner, oh, okay. composition? He um, manner, like doing the tango. You know what? He's not really that vicious. Not that vicious. No. Oh. Huh. Oh, that's curious. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Right. I know that he's not that vicious. You know that he's not that <laughs> vicious. Then what do you know about that killer whale? Huh? Well, the other people seem to be awfully afraid of him. Yeah, I know. So they think that he's vicious. But I know that he's not. So but you know what's not. What do you know now that I know negatively it is not? What is he then? If he's not vicious, um, he—I mean, he could be vicious, but he's—he's he's, um, benign. He's, I don't know the word benign. I know, I was afraid you wouldn't. Um, Can't spell it. He's—he's good. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
They should. What did that cost? Come on, what's that like going through that? <laughs> he's my ruse. He's he's what justified the fear. You know. The, the, yes, and of course, if it justifies the fear, that's why he's good. Yes. What? Well, wait a minute. Do that again. He's. He's looking like Willie right now. Yes, he's very much like Willie. Uh, he's very much but like he's, he's the people that are with me, the people that were with me on the ring, the people that mm -hmm. are with the little girl. If they're convinced that he's oh, yeah. a threat, yeah. then. Um, yeah, we're sure they're convinced. They're, okay. But how about yourself? No, I know no. that he's. <laughs> I know yeah. he's. he's, he's he wouldn't hurt me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore, what is she uh, blocking herself from having? Something very significant. Hmm. Wow. wow. In what way, wow? Just how that ties back mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. my mother. Yeah. Yeah. Does she have any teeth? No. No. Right. There's, there's a lot of um, a guilt on my part of, of an abandoning, abandoning my mother in, in an emotional sense. And, um, and I'm kind of dealing with some things about that right now. Because my mother um, is very much alone and um, is not in a position that she'll be able to take care of herself mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, as she gets mm -hmm, older. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think one of the things that has come to my mind in talking to her on the phone, that she's a very negative influence in my life and has been. Mm -hmm. And I, and mm -hmm. um, I have, I think I have chosen to, to, to keep some some distance because of that with her. But now, you know, I, I, I see somebody that's going to be needing some help very mm -hmm. soon, and, and so there's some conflict there for me. Yeah, you see, uh, it, if you didn't see this, mm -hmm. then you'd have an image of your relationship with her and your image of work. Now that you're reflecting on this, mm -hmm. right. uh, is it possible through this then you built up not only an image of work, but of her? Like, two things going on. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and that's that's um, really nicely um, encapsulates my relationship with my mother. Yeah. For yeah. A, a good many years. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But. Um, On reflection, mm -hmm. go ahead. You see it as something that you both were doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To bring bring her to this state of being alive, coming out, right. right? Right. Right. In that sense, you're her savior. Yes. You're playing a saving role. See, since I've been yeah, go ahead. withdrawing from playing into the emotional stuff, it doesn't. I don't get anything out of it anymore. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think that it's healthy for her either. And she gets angry with me on the phone. There's that sense of abandonment that I was telling you about. That she she wants to hook in. and, and That old way of being. That old way of being. And I'm not there for her anymore. Wait, 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 wait. Wouldn't you find it interesting? Um, to talk to her about this? Share it? Mm -hmm. Because, you see, that's not her any more than this is you. Right. Right. These are just roles you people have defined for who knows how long, right? right? Mm -hmm. or or how long it has been going on from family to family to family and family. Mm -hmm. She may not like it any more than you do. She may like to get out of it as much as you would. Mm -hmm. At least she might enjoy the opportunity just to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Might you not? You can say that. Yes. Yes, I think so. As a matter of fact, um, you might enjoy giving her this phone. <laughs> no edits. <laughs> What's that? Three minutes flat. <laughs> You can have everything but this. <laughs> no, look here. See, one of the most important things about everything dealing with understanding is that there's a part of us that doesn't believe the other party, the authority, whoever it might be, can take the truth. Which is really nothing other than we don't want to reveal it. that we're so glad to get out of it, we're afraid that we may be hooked back into it. Yeah. But, um, Willie is good. <laughs> he might even enjoy swimming with her. that the people's opinion may be doubted. Its veracity can be questioned, right? Yes. Hmm. Like, what do, you, what do you do with your understanding? Can you keep it? Or are you obliged, if you have it, that it's part of you that you are what you are showing? That's what you're showing. If you keep it in your back pocket, that gets quite bulky. Right? If you've reached a level of understanding, guess what? You'd be surprised. Let the other person have the problem, or at least the opportunity to have the problem, or at least to know that there's a different reality, and they might enjoy joining. Even if they don't, it's their decision. And you're free. 
long as you keep that door open. Huh? Curious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this. You find this curious? If we can say this much about the dream, or if someone was going through a, a mining area, rich loads, of, you know, great mineral wealth, and can find a heavy jeweled object embedded in the wall of a cave, right? And find it with great enthusiasm and see it there. And the only thing is, how do you get it out? Now that you recognize its worth, right? You've already discovered something of immense value. Now how do you get it out? Getting it out means sharing. Getting it out means sharing. Because you can't keep it yourself. You can't keep understanding. You carry it with you. You don't have to worry what to do with understanding. Let the other party deal with your understanding and your openness. It's there. They would enjoy the encounter. They need to grow. They need to deal with you. Now look here. If this dream can be looked at this way in the way in which we looked at the other dream, what does that mean about the mind, your mind or mind, to be able to structure it this way? to encapsulate in a few words, in a couple of images, the richness of your past and your present crisis. I mean, isn't it short? Is it really? It's quite amazing, isn't it? And then it can make a, a multimedia show for you that you take to be real, and it fits your moment, and it fits your crisis, and it can just drop it in and then add another little piece with this Willie the Whale. Was that a great opportunity to complete it? You are on a roll, as it were. Watch your dreams. They're going in a series. They're self-revelatory. They're, they're quite important. If so, let me ask you just two, no, four questions. Okay, right. Is it possible that this dream has a meaning for you? Is it possible that we've tapped some of it? Yes. Huh. Then the mind is revealing, as it were, for you, a way to understand yourself. In particular, to meet your own particular need. Would you not agree it's a, in a, some sense it's contributing to the line of your growth? Hmm. It's bringing a good. It's far-seeing. You know, classically, if you put all those words together, that's the word providence. Literally, that's providence. We don't use the word anymore because all it has is an ancient uh, context or, or association with certain religions and certain theological virtues. But this is providence. This is... This is a particular, a particular unfoldment of meaning totally appropriate to each individual that discloses and helps them see where they're going. It highlights their crises and offers, as it were, a beautiful snapshot of their psychic life, which you can then look upon and reflect. You know what that means? That means Right? Look here. That means this. Here we are. Going through our everyday world. There's something, there is something that is aware, that is aware of what we are experiencing, which it then picks up, then in some way can connect to our own past, finds metaphors and similes which within which to express it. So that means it's aware, it's aware of our waking world. And therefore, as you go through your waking world, you know what you have? 
you have something that's aware of your waking world on the highest level. That's providence. Believe it or not, that's providence. That is to say, you have something of vast intelligence capable of communicating to you in your own language, bringing together all of your past together with your present, finding appropriate symbols so that you can reflect on it, see, reflect on it and come to it. That reflection shows, therefore, that you're seeing an analogy between your dream life and your waking world, your present and your past and your future. That's what Plato calls self-knowledge in the Republic. That's what he says in the Republic, how man gets knowledge of the present, past, and future through dreams. It's play fun. That's the game they were in. And this is the game we're now in. So here's a curiosity, all right? Remember I had those four points? I hit three, last one, all right? You can go through your daily world and be aware of the fact that this is operating. You're not alone. You've got the wisest thing going with you, proven again and again to be wise and beneficial for your good. So the next time you walk through the world, right? Look over your left or right shoulder, there's something looking. You can't see it, right? It's invisible, but it's intelligent. Has no color, no size or shape, but it's certainly there. And it's in constant communication with you. It'll use your, your whole world and reflect upon it. And it does this every 90 minutes, every night. That's how many dreams you have, every 90 minutes, according to some researchers. Right? And it happens in every single person throughout the world, operating continuously, is that right? Continuously? And maybe not just on this planet, throughout all time. Something's pretty intelligent, isn't it? That's the idea of providence. Two kinds of good, a transcendent good and an imminent good that meets particular needs. Right. So, I have a new bumper sticker. Look over your left and right shoulder. Providence is watching. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, what is inside that book? What's inside of the book? Um, that's the question. Um, I don't remember, even if I knew what the title was in the dream, it was... The book was... was um, it was like a, um, a zip program. It was... Um, a worked. Uh, it was a, a worked. Hey. Um, a, pro uh, a program file, a computer file that had been condensed for ah, zip. Yeah, it's a zip file. And um, so on the outside, it was very small and very simple mm -hmm. to look mm -hmm. at. But the minute you start, could be quite it, it would expansive, expansive or formidable. It was. Ah. It was a word. So it was, um, I think, I, I, more like a concept, an idea. It was mm. just this huge thing. Who was the author? You. Me. Yeah. Ah, that's right. Put the name up there in the book. <laughs> yeah, Can I have another question? question? Um, what is a circle? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the circle, again, is kind of the same thing, I think, for me, because it's, it, we had talked about, you were in that class the, that night, the, the no, circle, I made the circle. Yes, the big circle, and being the whole, the mm -hmm. um, symbolic of the one. It, was, mm -hmm. it's, it looks empty, but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, it's an entirety. Is, is, is a circle entirety zipped, or can you take everything and zip it into a circle? Or something? Mm -hmm. um, it's um. This is, this is 
to make kind of a weird analogy, but the only way I can kind of explain it is like, you know how with a laser, you can take a sentences and compress them into a laser beam that's like this, and then if like, you shake your head, you can kind of see it's, yeah. it, it's like that. Okay. It, there's, there's, or, or like a, uh, a computer program or uh, no, a video code where stuff is encoded into it, mm -hmm. where it just seems like one thing, but when you really get to looking at it, there's, it's an unending complexity. So would you, would you say that a laser would take, it, would take a lot of reality and zip it down to a single yes. point? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. is, is a circle also a swimming pool? No. <laughs> I don't think so. What do you mean? Well, you can take a beach and you can put it in a circle and it'd be a swimming pool, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. this is something more of um, the air. Mm -hmm. That was helpful. To the depth of it. The, that brought out the depth of it. So. Um, in doing this kind of analysis with dreams or probing, uh, would it be safe to say that oftentimes, like for example with my dream, when it's my mother and my sister, I'm not, the specific meaning isn't something for me about my mother and my sister, but it's about the general thing of what that scene mm -hmm. entails, which uh -huh. was, which was, Here's a completely new kind of trust that mm -hmm. never existed. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes a person may appear in the dream if it's, say, Hitler, but it's not like I'm having something about Hitler specifically. It's going to yeah. be maybe what he represents yeah. in the picture. That's right. right. And that's the great, mm -hmm. so that it becomes very, oftentimes people that I might know in a dream become very metaphorical for the overall that's significance right. of that's the right. scene yeah. itself. Yeah. They are symbols. That's right. It's not like, it's not like <clears throat> I don't need to start taking this literally, oh, well, this person was in there, that means that I must be, need to call no, that person. No, or this is a, no. It's more like, what is it that I have always thought about this person yeah. deeply, and what, what does it mean that they're in that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. Right. Metaphors, symbols, similes, analogies, that's right. That's the stuff for which... It's exceptionally things. intelligent and profound. Is that? Like, if you wanted to make that richness, you want to bring all of that richness together and assemble it. That was a magnificent way to do it. Brother and sister as adults and child and mother and son and saying everything's okay. There's trust. What a way to do it. How creative. And to pick up that image that you were working on, there you are in the ring. And I was driving down the street the other day and there's a billboard for the... the Cirque du Soleil, a new show in Vegas, and there's this huge metal ring that they're, and they're standing, I think, at the, the bottom of it. It's not as big as mine, but it was exact, it is the same kind of thing. Can, can I um, take this a little bit and, and like, well, this dream here, I could probably look at this dream and it's got a lot of lines of code in it that are spinning in my program, okay? So I was, so this is nails in a few areas. Um, um, pushing it further, um, for me, a guy once told me that I would have to, in a sense, heal my relationship with my mother. Okay? In other words, send her the tape. Before I would be able to take a really go through that circle into the finish. Well, anyone who knows that, uh, you know, wow. They really know that's going to do that. <clears throat> well, no, they were saying that my, my relationship with my mother programs I've got uh, was, was preventing me while I was progressing going through that circle into the, the great uh, well yeah it's a doorway right yeah. a no doorway. see my point only is that when I say it's good to talk about it um, so long as your parent you know obviously if your parents are still living sure. they have a greater capacity for understanding because they've done all kinds of rich things in their own lives and they can take the challenge to grow, unless there's an adversarial situation where it would, it, you know, it's best not to. But if you have an entree and you want to test it and bring about the possibility of growth on everyone's part, it's certainly worth it. 
There's no guarantee that anything will occur from it. But it's certainly nice to give them the opportunity. And if I give them the, you said earlier, if you give them the opportunity, I heard those words, uh, yeah. you're free. You're free. That's right. Because you've opened up. They know you've opened up. If they don't take it, they know that they said no and they want to resume and continue the old status quo. But you don't have to continue to respond to a status quo that you, you very clearly indicated you no longer want to play. What you said about the idea that if I have understanding, it's meant to be acted upon. Yes. Yeah. Not because understanding is ultimately what we are. So if you show yourself, you're showing your understanding. It's not as if you can have understanding and caring and hide them. That is you. That's what you become. So here's to understanding. Thank you. Can I go up front and go high Sure. <laughs> Here I go. Hi, Mom. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Another good evening. Mm -hmm.